Stuart, 20 players um, named your initial training squad today. Um, can you talk a bit about the complexities you've had of selection over this, this group and um, what you're going to be doing with them at the start of next week? Yeah, I mean, you, you've obviously got to wait until the, um, the club seasons are finished uh, to, to involve them in an England camp and obviously inform the players. So the first part of the call was to wait and see who was in the top four. Uh, and once that Harlequins bath game was out of the equation, you know, we knew that Quinns had made it. Um, we knew that Worcester were in the seventh place playoff um, for, for Europe. Uh, and we knew the, the Amelie and Heineken finalists. So, you know, once we got that information, uh, we could narrow down which sides we were selecting from. And obviously what we've, in our minds we've got is, is a Barbarians team and a, a team to tour New Zealand initially and a group of players that will join them. But it is slightly um, speculation at the moment because we don't know exactly who's going to be in the final, but we'll know that after this weekend. So with the view of Premiership and finals, as you say, this weekend, have you constantly got selection conundrums and selection combinations going around in your head? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously there are you know, well, three or four different situations that could emerge. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see how it plays out. Certainly I'll be watching closely at home on Friday and Saturday, uh, and, and I'll know after then, and we'll be able to know what we can do because we'll have the cards uh, in our hands. You speak regularly about wanting to give players opportunities. I think in this 20-man group, 10 have already got a test experience, which is a testament to what you've achieved already in terms of giving players experience. But is that what you hope to do more of on this tour? Yeah, I do think it's a fantastic opportunity to see a wider group of players. I'm also excited about some of the players who perhaps won't go on the tour to New Zealand, but a chance to coach them next week. So, you know, there are lads in there for the first time, such as Chris Pennell, who, who it'll be brilliant to coach him. You know, I know we've been impressed with his form. We've not met him as a player. Uh, and it's his chance to get into camp and, and show us what he can do. And I'm sure he's super excited about that, up ch that chance. The likes of Chris Pennell, of course, and five players make the Chiefs who've had perhaps a disappointing season. Does that send a message to the Premiership as well, that you're willing to look at every player in every club, regardless whether they've had a struggling season or not? Yeah, I think no one can accuse us of, of, of not doing our homework on the players. You know, we watch every game, we discuss every game and every player every week. Uh, we ask the opinions of the clubs. I go around and speak to all the directors, we get their views. Uh, and we collate all that information and we make the decisions, you know, the best we can to, to give us England the best chance of winning. Danny Cipriani's back for the first time since 2008, but also makes some headlines. What do you think's changed from, from your point of view in terms of his play? What do you think you've seen in the last 18 months or so that's made you decide to bring him back now? Well, he's played um, uh, with far more consistency this season and he's, he's had a, uh, a good influence on the game at Sale, um, managed the game as well and uh, uh, he's uh, helped the team secure a pretty effective Premiership place at the end. So, so that's the first thing. Um, his distribution and his attacking game has been good. Um, and his, his defence has improved, so, and, and off the field, you know, certainly speak to Steve Diamond and Brian Redpath there, they're very positive about his contribution, and clearly, as a leader and as a fly half, you are the, you are the key man, you know what I mean? You are the people that people have to look up to and respect and admire, and uh, you've got to lead people, and you can only do that if you're a team player, and I think, you know, he's, he's worked that out. Hooker's somewhere where you've got some perhaps selection decisions to make. How excited are you about seeing Luke Cowan-Dickey close up? He's been impressive, hasn't he, at the end of the season for Exeter? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I went to watch him play at uh, Newcastle, and uh, uh, I thought he was the most effective forward on the field um, that day. Um, and for such a young player, um, you know, that's a testimony to, to how well he's done. I mean, clearly, I knew him from the under-20s. Um, he was playing a prop at that point, and, and, you know, going forward, the decision to switch on the hook, I think, was a sensible and, and uh, again, you, you, uh, Rob Baxter's been with us, he's been to Argentina, you know, he's, he, he knows the team well, he knows the players, and I asked his opinion and I said, you know, do you think he's got a chance of being an England player? And he said, long term, I think he definitely will be, and, and that's a pretty good um, reference.